okay, like the outer limits, Norm, you have the control of our TVs. All right. Hello. Good morning, Dale. Can you hear me? Yeah, Norm. Got you, okay. buddy. Uh, happy blue moon to you. Oh, thank you. Is it a blue moon? Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Two full moons in the same month, right? Is a blue moon? You are. Uh, well, let's see. Blue moon. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you got. Oh. Uh, I, it was a blue no, moon. I, don't, I don't see that. No. Okay. Well, that's anyway, so, uh, a we white. Have, it's a white moon. Go ahead. If there are any history fans out there, today is the 220, 227th anniversary uh, for the New York Stock Exchange. Oh, well, think, man, did uh, did we have fun that day? I know. I think you were. weren't you uh, uh, there? Yeah. The there, Dale? Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, yeah, at the Button Button Works factory. Yeah. Buttonwood tree there. That's what they call yeah, it. Uh, uh, yeah. The Buttonwood agreement. <laughs> All right, let's move ahead. I'm going to go back a couple of weeks to my, the beginning of my May. Was I started May because uh, it was a Monday on April 29th, and we can learn some things by looking back what's happened here in the last couple of weeks. Maybe we'll learn something that we can use sometime in the future. So the uh, the Monday night, April 29th, we had one of my top things was when the planets go direct or retrograde, especially what's called the outer planets. The, uh, those are the planets from Jupiter on out. They're the big, long, slow-moving planets, and they tend to have the most power. Saturn turned retrograde that night, and as you'll see in the charts here coming up, uh, that was pretty important. Uh, we're going to be looking at coffee and stocks for that. Then the night of May 1, we had Uranus making a 45-degree to Neptune, in Pisces, and that'll be chatting because Uranus is in Taurus the bull and Neptune's in Pisces, which is the big water, the big liquid. We'll be looking at cattle, cotton, copper, I guess Uranus, and oil and stocks. And then the weekend of the third, uh, we had a new, oh, we had uh, Jupiter line up with Saturn. And then oh, we also had that weekend, we had a new moon in the Taurus the bull. So we'll be looking at our round up the usual suspects for our new moon, full moon. Plus, because it was in Taurus the Bowl, we'll be looking again at the cattle and the cotton. And let's see, there's a new moon, and there we go. And we have another cluster we just had a few days ago, and so we'll be going over all that. Here's your S&P chart. Uh, yesterday, we had a big rally, and we went right back to 618 retracement of this whole down move. Uh, we got uh, just a few uh, handles shy of, uh, I believe, 28.96 would be about a 6.18. And we got to about 20, uh, 28.92. So there we go. So I was, I, what you, what we want to see at these times, and by the way, time is the most important factor in the market. Mr. Gann, I'm a student of W.D. Gann, the greatest market technician of the 20th century, and he said time is more important than price. So you don't even need to know what the prices are or the patterns are until you get to the key time window and then look at the market and see what uh, patterns are set up. So we like to see the markets get to some extreme at these key times. Uh, then we uh, then we go on Newton, kind of on Newton's law, where for every action there's an opposite equal reaction. So the the bigger the extreme we get at the key time, probably the the it's a high probability, probably 70, 75 percent, that you're going to get a reversal and a big reaction in the opposite direction, which is how we can make some money. Now, should it not reverse at the key time, uh, then the, you often will get, then you'll get a, uh, often get an acceleration, and then you need. That's why you need to have stop losses and either just get out or go with the let the trend be your friend and go with the trend. You know, you probably get a, a big acceleration there because when it doesn't reverse. It's usually huge in the same direction. All right, here's your S&P chart. As of last night, we were up here on the cash S&P, but overnight, uh, when I last looked a little while ago, the futures were down about 22 handles. And so now, unfortunately, we're back and kind of in the middle of this range. So that's a, kind of the least desirable scenario. We'll have to wait and see what happens here into the weekend when we have the new moon and this huge cluster. Actually, this is the highest energy window I have for the entire month. So we'll see what happens by Monday's opening. Maybe it'll continue lower and we'll get a, 
our big uh, mini crash here into Monday's opening, and then we'll have a buying opportunity as of last night, since we were near the highs, at least the retracement high here. I was thinking, oh, well, maybe we were going to put it on the top uh, into the weekend. All right, now we're going to, oh, uh, these marks I put on here, those correspond to all these different uh, planetary events that we had in the past couple weeks. A uh, green arrow is good. There's a red arrow there. That was a bad date. Uh, all these others were potentially money makers. There you go. If you sold there, you waited a day. It hardly went against you. And then it had a nice down there into a bottom. And then you had a nice bottom there. And uh, that was Monday the 6th. And I think. And, and uh, no, that was the 1st of May. There's the Oh, the night of the 1st, right. Then we rallied up to there. There's a big cluster there uh, for over the weekend of the 3rd into Monday the 6th. And we made a nice stop there. And then we went down, down, down. I had some GAN harmonics, math harmonics. If you're soon a GAN, you'll enjoy this. Uh, square days from major turning points. You take, for example, from the uh, May 6th was uh, 65 square days or 4,225 days from the October 11, 2007 major high. And that was, like, that was part of this uh, cluster here. There's an M for market math on my chart. Also, I have Fibonacci time cycles. And that also lined up for that same time for a top right there. We were just a little bit shy in price and one day late to that top. Uh, here's another one. We had a big cluster here on the 14th. And over here, uh, the 13th was a nice low. And we had kind of a, we were close to the low there on the one day late on that big cluster. Then we had to retest on the 15th with my 15th date there. And then we took off to the upside. All right, now we're going to look ahead here now. And, yeah, and then this green, uh, you see a green box? That means that we have a change in trend window open now. We'll be watching for a change in trend. And overnight, we got that right now. We're down 22 handles. So i uh, not sure what that means in the bigger picture. Into the weekend, we'll have to wait and see how we close today and how Monday's opening looks. We're, we're looking for an extreme. That's where the best trades are. Here's your coffee. Coffee is related to Saturn and Capricorn. And there, back there on April, April 29th, there's right there where the green arrow is, top of page two. Uh, you had the coffee make a nice short-term top there, and it was down quite a bit into for about a week. And there we go. Then we had uh, one day shy of the low of the month. I got the high of the month. I'm one day off for the low of the month. And then it went up. This it was like uh, something to, to do with Saturn oh. and Jupiter. Moving on ahead here now, we got cattle. Coffee looks like it's trying to break out of that channel. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of caffeine in it. There you go. Okay. Uh, and that's no Java, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Here's cattle. And there's your new moon there on that little top there. That date over here uh, didn't work out. That's why there's a red arrow. Green arrow is money. So we have a little spike high there for the cattle, and then down, 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 and same thing. And in the, on the cat, here's the cotton here, classic. Uh, didn't work out so well on that date, but this was a breakout on the new moon Monday over the weekend of the third when you had the new moon on Saturday. It uh, broke the support line right there on Monday, and boom, and it had a big down. Did you have anything on the uh, trade war deal and grains? I'm coming up to the grains in just a minute. Oh, I, I didn't. Yeah, uh, we're going to look at the greens in just a minute, okay? Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, here's your oil. Uh, did did some, somewhat similar to cotton in that it uh, came to a wedgie apex there right on the new moon, and it had the breakout to the downside there, but it didn't go very far. Just kind of after it broke out, it kind of chopped sideways. Here's your T-bonds. T-bonds uh, had a window... Oh, right there. There's the green arrow there. Uh, one day off, but it wasn't very good. And you barely had a, any kind of decent entry. And then it went slightly higher. Maybe a, you might have had a chance. To, oh, it broke out over this uh, little downtrend line there. So uh, you might have made, had a chance to make a little bit of money there. Not uh, that great. Here's your dollar. was one day off of this spike high here at, right on the new moon. And then it just kind of drifted lower. And British pound was probably the best looking chart I got here today. It, is, it rallied right to the new moon. 
and uh, to Monday, uh, double top Friday to Monday, the third to the sixth. And that uh, I think your your people will, will like that because <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. What do you right? think now that it's had this decline? You have any turning well, points? That's a good now? question. We're now coming into the new moon, full moon box here. Oh. We got the full moon this weekend, and oh. so we'll be looking. It looks like it's scraping bottom here, so I'd be looking for a bottom here, looking for a reversal. If okay. it doesn't turn by like about Monday, then there's trouble in River City. It could go a lot lower, you know. Got it. Here's your euro. Euro is not nearly as nice as the British pound. Had a little spike low there and then chop, chop, chop sideways. And maybe you'd make a few ticks and nothing, nothing to write home about. Uh, gold did not behave very nicely, and I'm going to say that was a miss. However, its cousin, silver, was much, much better. The silver rallied right into the new moon there, and you made it kind of like, kind of looks like the British pound pattern. We made a double top there over the third into the Monday the sixth, and you made a little bit of a top there, and then down, down, down she goes. And again, that's kind of like the British pound in that we're kind of at the bottom of the range here, into coming into the full moon. Here's your corn. You ask about the grains, and let's see, we had there. Oh, there we go. There's your uh, new moon right there, back on the weekend of the third into Monday the sixth. You had a little spike low there. It popped up. You could have made a few pennies, uh, nothing uh, again. The not, nothing. Yeah, not, yeah, nothing on the low. Was that the uh, tariff day when the tariff war increased? Uh, you had that big spike reversal down there. It looks like the date is the thirteenth. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember anything significant on that day. But, yeah, the uh, trade war. Right. I understand news. That's oh. news. But oh, news. Yeah. Okay. You had nothing there. From the astronomically, plan. yeah, I okay. Can't say off the top of my head, I, I did, you know, right? So, okay, I don't think maybe I'll go look again, and but we don't have time for that. Here's your beans, yeah, uh, they did a little tiny short term bottom there on Monday the 6th and had a anemic rally and then failed and went down. Uh, so, and here's your wheat, wheat's uh, been the star, maybe a slightly better. We've had a huge rally here since uh, yeah. Monday the 13th. Right. And that means these grains, I would have preferred to see the grains go down into this weekend. That could have set up a really great buying opportunity. But since they've rallied now into the weekend, now we're probably looking at maybe a short-term top here into the full moon. Mm -hmm. okay, so let's look ahead. What's coming up? So we got to, we just had something overnight. We had Jupiter make a 90-degree angle to the U.S. natal chart. That's, we take a snapshot of where the planets were when the country was founded on July the 4th. 72 of the six, and that indicates a change of trend for stocks, deep bonds, and dollar, and possibly the U.S. oil. And so far, we've certainly got that on the stock market overnight. We're, when I last looked a while ago, down 22 handles on the S&P. And then we have this weekend, we have a full moon in Scorpio, and that'll be you round up your usual suspects, financials, grains, precious metals. And because it's in Scorpio, we're running a special on cocoa, Hogs and T bonds. There's your Jupiter in Sagittarius. We're going to line up with Uranus and Taurus, and that's going to be uh, cattle, cotton, cattle, copper, cotton, and stocks. And also the Mercury at zero north latitude. That's one of my top things where the plants get the zero latitude as they go around the sun. They not only go round and around, they go up and down. And when they get to that midpoint on their highway there, at zero latitude. I'm getting a uh, question from one of the attendees. Uh, not sure I get what Norm is speaking about. What's the idea of speaking about Capricorn, the mo new moon? Could you elaborate? Capricorn. I'm not sure I understand the question either, but okay. Capricorn's one of the signs of Zodiac. Right. There's 12 signs. If they want a lesson on this, I'll give a free lesson if they contact me afterwards. I'm a little short okay. on time. Go ahead. I know up. you're – say hi to Larry for me after this. Okay, will do. All right, so uh, we got the, yeah, then we got the full moon coming up here. Jupiter is lining up with Uranus and Taurus. And Mercury, oh, this is what's important for this. The Mercury, when well, Mercury and the moon are the top two short term indicators for the grains. And look, they're both having a big uh, thing here over the weekend. So that's a convergence of cycles. So the grains are very, could be a big turn here in the grains. Over the weekend, possibly, you know. 
And then we have the Moon's North Node in Cancer. That's going to be silver with a Saturn in Capricorn. That's coffee. So watch for coffee, silver, and stock. So I'm going to review now these charts just real quick so you can see with those things in mind, okay, what, what, what the potential is. Now, obviously, things have moved overnight, but as of the charts last night, here's your S&P had the potential maybe to make a top here, but I had a change of trend overnight, as I indicated, and now we're back to the middle range, so I don't know about that one. Coffee has been going up. Uh, I don't. We don't have that one on the new list, on the new shopping list. We do have cattle, I believe, on the list here, so that could be making a low here. Cotton's the same. If it, if it were to pull back a little bit to the bottom there, that would be good. Oil is kind of going sideways. Not thrilled about that, unless it has a, a, some extreme move either way. Maybe it's uh, topping. You added uh, today's supposed to be an important day in crude. It made a new high, and it's coming off. Okay. Here's your T-bonds. Looks like they might be making, they got a little pullback here. Maybe they'll make a low uh, over the weekend. Here's your dollar. That look, definitely looks like it's at the top of its channel. Could be putting in a top here. If it breaks out over that red line, though, then you're looking at acceleration to the upside. British pound is pretty clear. It's either should be near a low unless it breaks the channel on the downside. And again, you're looking at acceleration to the downside. Euro is scraping bottom, so that we'd be looking for a low there. There's your gold. is has been coming down and into the full moon, so we're looking for a low there. Same thing on the silver. Your, your grains are all have rallied now into this time window, and so we'd be looking, if they're assuming they're up, uh, sideways or up today, we'd be looking for a top, and that uh, kind of covers that. So here's the only charts we haven't looked at now. Our cocoa is indicated for this weekend. It's rallied now in the last few days to the top of its channel. So we'll be looking for a top there. And same, uh, hogs have had a little bit of rally here into uh, the into today. So looking for a top there. And the only chart left is copper. It's kind of been generally coming down. If it would pull back a little bit into the weekend, that would be a, a possible buying opportunity. So now, get a hold of me, folks. I give free classes out. Just tell me Dale sent you, and you can get a, the quickie class where I teach you how to day trade in 20 minutes. Very successful day trading system, and I will prove it. Or you can get the deluxe class where I teach you GAN and Astro and Fractals and Advanced Fibonacci and about everything I've learned in the past 50 years. I'm a former Chicago floor trader, started trading started studying the markets when I was a teenager, 15. I'm 68 now, so that's like 53 years. And I was uh, on the Chicago exchanges there uh, right out of college. You, you're starting to get the hang of things now? Uh, I'm practicing. Okay. <laughs> anyway, there's my contact info. I'm here in sunny Florida. And you can call me or you can email me. And there's my Skype, and Winsky underscore one. And looking forward to helping some of your folks, Dale. All right. Thank you, Norm. Uh, thank you, I really Norm. appreciate you dropping by. Good Maybe hunting. I, and I might have a minute or two. I could probably feel the one or two questions if there's anybody out there. Um, uh, someone said, uh, I didn't think, I didn't link astrology and trading, but if it works for Norm, I won't question it. Just it oh, went I pattern. Know, Dale, yeah. I know this stuff looks complicated, but I'm going to, they take my class, they'll find out. This is all yeah, Lass, uh, he's got a free class, so you could ask the man the question, okay? Right, you bet, um, so what I want to say is, get, get a hold this, of him. This stuff looks complicated, but when I explain it all, you'll find that everything's on a grade school level. There's nothing here that you couldn't do, uh, you know, as a, a fifth grader can't do, you know? Yeah, so free, all you're doing is spending some time and talking to a guy that uh, really has a great handle on some of the lost starts that you don't hear about anymore. I don't think there are algos based on astron astronomy yet. Anyway, well, I so, got, uh, huh? I got the biggest computer there is, Dale. It's called the solar Your brain. Oh, yeah, that really is a nice computer. Yeah. All right. Well, Norma, I love you, buddy. Thanks for dropping by today, and have a great weekend, and I'll, I'm sure I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you very and, much, Dale. And I encourage everyone to, you know, check it out and take Norm's free course and see if you have an interest. You you only know if you you try it.
So that's a wrap for us this week, everyone. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Have a great weekend. And don't forget to do your work over the weekend. Check out Blake's Week Ahead video. And uh, that's it. Uh, enjoy your weekend, as I said, and we'll be back here Monday to kick ass. See everyone then. Thank you again, Norm. Thank you. Have a great week.